bike ride of the season and it feels oh so good. <laughs> Actually, that's a lie. I have biked, but this was my first bike into work of the season and it was glorious. The cherry blossoms were looking beautiful this morning. Everybody that was out was awfully nice. I got to pass through the marina. Ah, just feels, feels good to be back on that bike, you know? So I think I really should do more often, but it is another day at the bookstore, the start of another reading vlog. And we're starting off with a bang because I'm reading The Seas by Samantha Hunt, which is a book I have heard no one speak about. And I am awfully confused because it's magnificent. Actually, that's another lie. <laughs> I did see that Iris uh, talked about this book. I think it was their 2020 or 2021 list of favorites. But other than them, I just have not seen anyone else discuss this and it's absolutely delightful. The writing is truly blowing me away. Um, I'm only uh, 70 pages in, but we are in a coastal town in the US. I want to say it's Maine, but actual name is um, not disclosed to us. The picture Maine and we're in the mind of a 19 year old and she's navigating life of loneliness and feeling a little bit disconnected to the place that she calls home. And the thing that's kind of tying her to the place is her dad's disappearance and uh, her assuming or actually not assuming, she really believes that she is a mermaid and her dad simply just walked into the water and reunited with his mermaid clan, if you will. It sounds quite fantastical and absurd, but it's very believable and you're not like rolling your eyes by any means. It's a beautiful narrative and I will talk more about it uh, as we read along. I just wanted to do a little introduction. The store's looking beautiful. I did some, actually I'll show you, hold on. <laughs> Last week I did a few little write-ups um, about the books that I'm curious about. Um, Pure Color being one of them. This one I've read and it's just nice to see them up on the main table. I sent them to the boss to get the green light obviously, but yeah. So store is looking beautiful, like I said, and hopefully we have a nice busy day of book selling. <laughs> we also have this amazing table of Ukrainian authors, um, which all the books have been selling really well and it's been lovely to see. Let's rock and roll. So it's another day at the bookstore and another day that we biked. <laughs> so excuse the bike here. I look a little crazy, but um, oh my God, it's so freaking lovely. I'm going to try and do it at least twice a week because it just like wakes up my senses and I bike mostly um, bordering the water. So it's just so pleasant. And especially now because all the cherry blossoms have bloomed and it just looks so pretty. Like it's just a nice way to start the morning. I understand why there's so many freaking runners. <laughs> like that's not really for me, but I could totally get up early and just do the same loop on my bike. <laughs> but anyways, I am still reading the seas and I'm probably gonna finish it today. I've got 30 pages left, but I'm like trying to draw it out as much as I can because I'm just so in love with Hunt's writing. I mean, it's really just so gorgeous and I don't know what it is, but something about this book has like truly just penetrated my soul. The writing is so like long, poem. The reason why I say poem is because in my few brushes with poetry, I find I have a very like emotive or emotional response to what I'm reading. And typically when I'm reading fiction and novels, I don't really feel that like I do. Obviously there are stories that really impact me and linger in my mind and whatnot, but it's not quite the same feeling that I get when I'm reading poetry. And this is what I get when I'm 
uh, reading the story, it just like really just hits different, <laughs> like without sounding like an idiot. It really does. Just picture this as like a little magical bundle of joy. <laughs> Not particularly a joyful read. It's actually very melancholic and um, a little sad, but there's just something really just beautiful about it. And I think you just have to go in blind and let the words kind of eat you up and wrap you up in this like tidal wave and just go through the motions <laughs> and see where you end up at the end. But yeah, and I've just underlined so many just beautiful sentence sentences. Like this is one of them. I wish I were a tidal wave, something strong that would rock me backwards and throw, throw Jude's body on top of mine. The hollow of not having him has given me something powerful to do. I really like that. Some nights I want Jude so badly I imagine I'm giving birth to him. I pretend to sweat. I toss and wring my insides out. Mostly I think this because it's how badly I want Jude's head between my legs. <laughs> it's just like... Tell me you can't just visualize that. Tell me that's not the most poetic way of saying you're feeling some type of way about somebody. I mean, come on, this is just beautiful. Story is kind of reads like very loosely woven together little essays or little specific vignettes in this girl's life. I know I'm not doing the best job at talking about this book, but just trust me, if you see it, do yourself a favor and pick it up. It's just amazing. I, I need everybody to read this. I was actually talking to Iris yesterday. I'll link their channel down below. And they were saying that this is their go-to recommendation because they also work at a bookstore. And I said to them, I was like, I'm also gonna shove this in everyone's hand <laughs> that comes into the store from now until the rest of my days at this bookstore because I need more people to read this. It's just such a gem. It really is such a little gem. So anyways, that is my little rant about the C's. We will come back once I have finished. Hello, it is editing me and I'm just looking back at my clips talking about the C's and what a terrible job I did at giving you what the basic premise of the book is about considering how I read all quotes having to do with an obvious love interest that I never mentioned. <laughs> so big plot point that, like I said, I just blatantly did not mention is that the main voice of the book is madly in love with a sailor slash war veteran who is 14 years her senior. And that's a very complex dynamic that plays out throughout the pages and it's just so engrossing and a big part of the novel and what's so eerie and captivating about it. The events that unfold through that relationship and what comes up is so interesting and done in such a masterful way. Like I said, it's a very psychological book and it's a look at her own psyche and how she's processing things and the ways that she looks at the world are so unique. That is all I'll say because I am, I was right <laughs> in saying that this book is kind of like a little hidden treasure of mystery, I think is a better way of saying it because it's so layered and things will unfold in a, such a beautiful way throughout the story that I don't wanna ruin anything for you, but Yes, go into it blind and you will be rewarded in the end. It's an entirely unique, very complex and an eerie, not in like a scary way. Like you're not going to be spooked, but it is just, there's like this sense of bubbling up and uncertainty because you have to read between the lines and interpret things on your own. The author is not taking sides or telling you what's real, what's not and it's for it's an invitation for you to decide and take the story whatever way you want to take it so I love it when authors do that it sort of reminded me a little bit of um, Freshwater in that regard which I love books or characters that are existing in these liminal spaces and 
it's, oh, it's just so special. I love books like this. So anyways, I'm gonna stop my rant and let you continue on this reading vlog, but I just had to just correct myself because that was just painful to watch. So apologies. <laughs> Good morning. We just woke up. We've got our freshly made cup of tea right here <laughs> and we're just getting ready for a day of sitting on the couch and reading <laughs> which sounds so lovely i feel like i've had a very busy week i've also been playing airbnb host <laughs> for the past like two and a half weeks which has been super lovely but this is the first weekend where i'm just relaxing at home by myself so there's something really pleasant about that so I've compiled a couple books here that I want to share with you, uh, some that I got from the library and others that I actually found at a local little um, like free library outside of somebody's house and they had some bangers. They had all of the Elena Ferrante quartet, they had a Rachel Cusk in there, and they had this, which like they're really hidden very different to <laughs> demographics, which I love. I found The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This is the first of the uh, Broken Earth trilogy. I've been wanting to read this book or at least have it in my collection for quite some time. I read her short story collection, How Long Till Black Future Month, and absolutely loved it. That was my introduction to her writing. And I've been recommended this book on several occasions, both on the tubes and in my real life. Um, the latest one being Sage. I know that they read it and actually recommended it to Charlie, which is partly why I also wanted to get it because I feel like this is a book that both him and I could enjoy, but I'm gonna wait for the fall to read this. <laughs> but I just got so excited when I saw it because um, I've been meaning to buy it and I just got it for free. Actually, on my way to the library is when I picked that up to pick up these two new books. Um, the first being uh, What Are You Going Through by Sigrid Nunez. We all know how much I loved The Friend and actually Alex, the sweet, sweet Alex from What Page Are You On, mentioned that this, he read this or interpret this as a continuation of The Friend and I could not agree more. I actually, so yesterday I finished The Seas, which was absolutely divine. <laughs> I just loved that book and savored it from beginning to end. And instantly I picked this up and I read about a hundred pages and I'm really enjoying it. Again, it's got that very crisp, smart, and yeah, just direct way that uh, Nunez writes that I just really appreciate. However, up until the 100 point mark, I'd been just enjoying it, but then I was like, okay, I need a little bit of a break and I need a little bit of plot. It reminds me a lot of Rachel Cusk's outline because we are following this unnamed narrator um, through distinct points, or not even points, but just like very distinct memories or um, events in her life. And they're like loosely interwoven, but I think it's meant to be read as like a short story collection, but following one singular voice. Because we start off the novel or the short stories, I don't know, <laughs> um, with the narrator going to see a dear friend of hers who's sick in the hospital recovering from cancer and recovering from surgery. And we follow their friendship. I mean, granted, I'm like halfway through, so perhaps this will change, but we are following their friendship as well as the main narrator's life outside of this friendship. I am really enjoying it, but they're all, it's basically just similar to Rachel Cusk's outline. It's just little snippets and conversations that she's having with the different people in her life or reflecting on past experiences that somehow shape her current reality. I needed a little bit of a break, which led me then <laughs> to pick up Cold Enough for Snow because the sweet Alex on Instagram known as Little Baby Cherub, I believe I will put their Instagram handle here. If you wanna laugh and just like fall in love with somebody on the internet, just follow them. <laughs> Anyways, they were saying how they just started reading this and I 
had to jump on the bandwagon and also pick this up. I know Ben read it and loved it and a few other, uh, Jalen also read it and really enjoyed it. So I'm really excited. I'm only what, 11 pages in and basically just read the first chapter. I'm really enjoying the tone of this book. It's very like calm and we're doing a lot of contemplating and it's a very soft, calm, tone also is driven by a bit of plot which is what i was missing from this guy and it's also much rooted in place the setting of japan is going to play a huge role in this book we are following a mother daughter who embark on a trip to uh, japan and I enjoy so far the relationship and the dynamic between these two women, as well as, like I said, just the gorgeous landscape that they find themselves in. So I think if you like books, like tra not travel books, but books set in interesting places and locations, and they almost figure into the story just as much as the characters themselves, and I think you're really gonna enjoy this, but it's very calm and contemplative, like I said, and just what I needed. <laughs> So yes, that I picked up as well. And the last library book is Asymmetry by Lisa Holiday. Halliday? I don't know. <laughs> and I remember Tammy from Tams Can Read discussing this book ages ago, and I don't fully remember what she said. I'm pretty sure she liked it, but typically what I do when I go into the library is I just look at familiar spines and pick them up because I know that someone or other has mentioned, reviewed, or... Um, talked about that book before so I just pick it up and see what um, what I'll think of them but with like a very vague recollection of seeing them in the past at some point. <laughs> so those are my new acquisitions that I am slowly working my way through. Very much enjoying both books that I'm reading which this is so unlike me. I typically don't read two books at the same time but I guess it's only a matter of time before I started doing that, considering how much of a moody bitch I am. <laughs> I am on my lunch break, but as you saw, we went to the marsh for the first time this year. <laughs> And I woke up really early. I've been going to bed at like 9.30 and waking up at like 6.37. And I'm like, this is kind of early. Like, what do people do this early? <laughs> so I took myself on a little walk and I just sat by the marsh. And I love doing that. It's just so nice in there. It's a few minutes away from my house. So we did some reading and now I'm on my lunch break. I think I said that already. I'm sitting by the window because, oh, the sunshine just feels so freaking good. I know I say this all the time, but I'm telling you, if you live in the Pacific Northwest, like you just want to absorb any and all sunshine that your skin is lucky enough to feel. <laughs> so I'm just sitting by the window trying to absorb as much as I can, but I think I'm going to finish this today. It is absolutely delightful. There are so many just vivid depictions of art and just the magic that lies with going somewhere new and discovering a place that you've never been to before or a place that you've been to but through a different perspective, through a different lens if you're going with somebody who is going there for the first time. So the unnamed narrator is bringing her mother to Japan. I think I mentioned that already. And she's been there before and she's, you know, preoccupied herself with creating, curating the most special and intentional trip for herself and her mom. And they're just frequenting these art galleries and museums and it's just really lovely. It's a very quiet novel, if that makes sense. There aren't, there's no dialogue, but we know what's going on between the characters because she's telling us. <laughs> But there's not, I think she wants to have a more intellectual and just think through and dissect what it is that she's absorbing. And the mother is a little bit detached or she's not 
giving her exactly what she internally wants from her mom but it's very subtle it's done in a super subtle way and you know i love a good mother-daughter dynamic or just any familial relationship so it's just interesting to see the nuanced look at mother-daughter relationships through this um these two people in particular all within the scope of being in a foreign place and navigating life when you're traveling with somebody else in this case being family and yeah I'm really enjoying it I'm gonna sit here do a little bit more reading and we'll come back when I finished I think <laughs> long time no see. It's been a few days since we last saw each other. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> this past week has been so hectic and just busier than usual. I had a project deadline for my other job, so I was busy doing that, but I did get to finish both of the books that we spoke about last time, so let's just round it up. But before then... Outfit check. <laughs> literally the most boring most basic outfit I could share with you but anyways we've been very uninspired to dress cute these days but anyways where were we I finished what are you going through and I friggin love Sigrid Nunez there's something about her writing and I've said this before but it's just so crisp and just so smart but with a witty like humor that I really enjoy. There's, uh, I don't know, I just love her voice and the tone of her writing so much and it's very distinct. I mean, there's very clear similarities between The Friend and What Are You Going Through? We are back. I got interrupted before and then there was just a bunch of people that came in. So I kind of lost my train of thought, but I think I was saying how it was nice that I read it in conjunction to um, Cold Enough for Snow. I took a bit of a break and then came back to it and I just appreciated the story so much more. And I think it to the later half of the book really kind of narrows in on one specific storyline because like I mentioned, the book is just um, loosely tied together conversations that she's having the protagonist with uh, various people in her life and strangers too. But the later half, focuses on her relationship with um, this friend of hers, the one who at the beginning of the book we find out is sick with cancer. And I won't give away the like main plot point uh, that happens towards the end of the book, but it was so well done. There's something I really admire about how she talks about grief and relationships in such a, like I, I've now mentioned a million times, but in such a crisp and concise manner but also imbued with sentimentality and emotions like her writing is so well balanced and it's just a beautiful thing so I'm really glad I read it and I'm glad I took a break so that I could just really sit with it and just really enjoy the last hundred pages so that was uh, what are you going through and then cold enough for snow I also finished last night and I really liked it. I won't lie, part of me wanted a little bit more, especially because, like I also mentioned, there was a lot of unsaid things between the mother and daughter, at least from the daughter's 
perspective and I was kind of hoping that towards the end there would be some not resolution but like some deeper conversation or we would kind of peel back the layers of that tension that I felt kind of bubbling throughout the entirety of the novel but sadly we do not get that <laughs> so it's a very quiet kind of topical novel through and through but I really enjoyed it there's some very vivid images and chapters in that book that I, one specifically that I'm still thinking about and I just know that it will live in my brain rent free for a long time and I have that with a few books where I couldn't tell you the end or the beginning or really like what the story was about, but I will just have a super vivid image or scene of that specific book that I don't know what it is about these, these scenes, but they just stick with me. And in this case, it was a chapter where she's uh, talking about a crush or intellectual admiration that she has for one of her professors and the professor actually ends up asking the narrator to house sit and just the way that she's expressing and walking us through this house and this week and this kind of almost movie-esque um environment and role she takes on while living in this woman's footsteps was just so captivating and just so vivid in my mind that I just really enjoyed getting that peek into that experience. Part of it too probably is because I'm sure many of us can relate to having a academic crush on a professor at one point or another, like not even like a, a romantic crush, although I'm sure that's also something that we felt at one point or another, but it more just like an intellectual like infatuation with uh, one of our professors so maybe that's what it was because I had that my art history professor I still think about her from time to time I just love her I unfortunately did not have the um, privilege to <laughs> ever go to her house but the imagery in the book is quite phenomenal and will stick with you whether it's a specific scene I'm talking about or another countless other instances in that book um, read it for that alone but if you're expecting a kind of deeper dissecting of, oh God, hold on. Okay, we're back. Anyways, so those are the two books that we finished and I'm really glad to have read them both. Now I am reading Life Ceremony by the author of Convenience Store Woman, which I have not read, but I saw that this was a proof that we received and I'm gonna take it with me. <laughs> we sometimes get, not by we, I mean the owner, and the store, like I did not order this. This was not meant for me directly, but she always puts them in the back and we're free to read anything that's back there. So I've taken the liberty to start <laughs> their uh, short story collection and they're pretty friggin' trippy, but I'm just really enjoying it. I've only read two stories thus far, but yeah. So I think I'm gonna wrap the reading vlog here, please read all the books I read this week because they were fire reads through and through the highlight being the seas I mean that book really deserves some more love <laughs> so please go and read that book if you happen to cross paths and I hope you're having a lovely week or weekend